Hey everybody, welcome back to another deck profile and today we're going into the Shadowverse. I just, I had to, it, it was right there. So me, myself and I and Miles decided we were going to kind of start getting into the Shadowverse bandwagon and we actually did participate in the Shadowverse Team League event for Ontario, which we didn't really do that well because Miles and I were still really new in our third, which is VG Punk Aiden, which you guys can follow them in the description below. They also do some card game content if you wanna check them out. We played Team League, we didn't do that well because we're still new to the game, or at least Miles and I were, but I still got a lot of really good experience playing this game and I feel like I have a really good fundamental understanding of how to play my deck and you know starting to go to locals more often and playing with some people there for Shadowverse so I can definitely say I'm getting my feet wet with Shadowverse so I wanted to show you guys what I've been playing around with for Swordcraft because that's kind of my thing swords and knights and stuff let's just go ahead and jump right into the deck profile all right so before we get started going to the deck profile I actually really quickly wanted to talk about these dice that I got from Avalon Accessories these dice are actually really really helpful with helping me keep track of the stats that all my followers are getting. So I'll put a link in the description below. If you guys are interested in picking up these really, really nice custom dice, they even come with like a plus three, three, a little shield for ward and so you, you know, in case you forget, cause I forget. I'm a really big fan of like the ruby color here. Very nice with the translucent color. They also make Vanguard dice as well. If you're interested in picking up some Vanguard dice from Avalon, comes in the same quality. These are really, really nice, high quality dice. So. If you're interested in picking these up, go ahead and check out the link in the description below so you can check out Avalon Accessories. So with the deck profile, just starting off, we got our leader card, which is vital to the gameplay, apparently. It's also like an NFT, basically. And it'll actually scan the physical card itself and it'll tell you what character you're using. So there are certain character cards that will have alternate arts. This one's just the one that's from the trial deck and you can get their own little special, you know, design and they have their own different emotes and everything. So this is also the same character from the default screen. So you just click that, start, it's the, pretty much the same thing. But if you wanna get the exact artwork, you can scan the card as well, just so you can have a nice little special thing going on for your mobile app when you're playing against your opponent. So with that other way, let's actually get into the important stuff for the uh, versed Shadowverse players and get it. Get it? That's that's the joke. But going right into the deck, we'll start with the, the low cost first. So we'll do with all of our ones. So this is a heroic swordcraft deck. So we got a lot of heroic cards. We're gonna be starting off with our three copies of Iron Rot Defender. So Iron Rot is really, really simple. He's a one, two, two. He's got fanfare. If you have two heroic cards in your cemetery, it gets one shield and ward. So it's still nice for a one drop to be a two, three late game with ward but it's still a nice early game, just throw it down as a 2-2, can't go wrong with it. So, uh, but it's, again, this is a heroic focus deck, so we're gonna want a lot of heroic cards. Then we got three copies of Swordsman, which is pretty much a staple in like any Swordcraft deck. It's fanfare, lets you engage one of your opponent's followers, so that way you can just kind of swing into it when you're trying to board clear, but it also has the ability where you can engage itself to engage something on your opponent's board. So you can actually do it like twice. You could play it, engage something, then rest it, or spend it or engage it to engage something else. Swordsman is super, super good, especially for one drop. So this card is a definite, definite three of. Then we got my favorite card in this deck, Old Man and Old Woman. I don't, don't know why they named this card that or why they chose this card art, but all it does is it has Bane. Bane means that whatever this touches, whatever this swings into dies. I don't understand what the connotation between this card having Bane and why it's an old man and an old woman. Uh, it's a fable, so maybe there's some type of like story or folklore that I'm not aware of that has to do with an old man and an old woman just killing things, but you know, it's, it's just a super, super, super good card, especially for a one drop, and we're running a lot of one drops in this deck. Uh, next we got three ninja trainees because it's another one, two, two, and you know, Really good opener, just turn one, throw down a trainee, just to have it on the board. A lot of one drops will usually just only have one attack. So even if you swing into it, most of the time people aren't really gonna swing into the trainee to get rid of it, unless you're playing against like another Swordcraft deck. So the trainee is a really good one drop, so four of it. My last one drop follower is just one quick blader. And this is just my personal choice because we are running the Leonidas, which does give everything 
3 3 and rush. So I figured this is really good since it has storm. So, storm meaning you know you can just swing the minute it's played, swing into your opponent's face. So, I figured a late game one drop four, you know, to swing will probably do really well in the long run. But also, Valiant Fencer requires you to have two or less in hand. So, I figure if I'm just one away, you can throw down a quick blader real quick and it can swing into face for one extra damage. So, you know, it kind of helps because you're trying to dwindle out your own hand. So, I like the one drops. And lastly for one drops, we got uh, three Unbridled Fury, which is the only spell we run in the deck. Uh, it's a quick, so you can use it at the end of your turn or during your opponent's battle phase or at the end of your opponent's turn. So you can select an enemy follower, deal X damage, where X is equal to the number of followers on your board. We do make a really, really big, you know, sizable board. So you can easily pop something for four or five or sometimes three if you just want to get rid of something in your opponent's board. The fact that you can also use this at the end of your own turn, so that way when you have that one mana left over and you're just like, eh, I made a board, let's destroy something on your field real quick at the start of your turn, so your opponent can't use it to swing with or whatever other effects they want to use. So I think Unbridled, just the fact that it's a one drop that can deal four, it's really, really good. But that is it for the one cost cards. Now we're gonna get into the rest of the deck. The only two drop we run is Amaro Spear Knight, which is a heroic. So what it does is you can evolve it for three and it also has strike. So if there is another heroic fall in your field, you can give this one, one. And obviously over time, this is gonna stack, but Amaro is in the deck because he's a heroic and also his evolved form is crazy good. So we'll get into the evolved cards in a little bit, but the whole deck falls around heroics and Amaro is just one really, really good key stable card for the deck. So now for the three drops, we do run quite a few three drops, starting off with Valiant Fencer, who's kind of like the ace of the deck, so to speak. So you can evolve him for one, but you can only evolve it if you have two or less cards in your hand. He has a fanfare, which is when it's placed, you search your deck for any heroic card with a different frame from this card, and you put it back and put it into your hand. So that includes heroic spells, your Amaros, your Iron Rots, other, you know, really good heroic cards. So it's deck thinning, toolboxing, so the fact this can toolbox you any heroic card you're looking for is really good, but also its evolved version is just even better, just what it does when it, you evolve it. So speaking of more heroics, we got three Mock Knight. So we're pretty much running full play sets of all of our heroic cards. Mock Knight is, you can evolve it for one, and it also has the fanfare. When this is put onto the field, anywhere other than from your hand, you can give it Storm. So you have ways to call heroic cards from your cemetery, you have ways to call heroic cards directly from your deck, kind of like a gold paladin moment there. So Mock Knight can easily swing into face with Storm, and you also have a lot of abilities that give heroic cards plus one one. So this can be potentially a four with Storm swinging in face that you pulled out of your deck or from your drop. So then next for three drop cards, we are running the classic Floral Fencer. This is like a super staple for any Swordcraft deck. Floral Fencer, you just evolve it for one, but when you evolve it, you get to make tokens. So this is why this is really, really good because it just gives you board presence. So the main thing that I, <laughs> learning to play Shadowverse was that I learned that the main thing about playing Swordcraft is you want to make a board and force your opponent to respond to your board. So Floral Fencer is like one of the best cards to help you make a board because you just evolve it and you have one. It's really, really simple. Then next for three drops, I am running three. Gem Staff Commander, another really good staple for Swordcraft. Gem Staff is a toolbox card, so it just lets you search any Swordcraft follower in your deck and add it to your hand. So that includes itself if you just want to deck thin and pull out another Gem Staff. But this is what's pretty much going to help you find your one of. So a good example for things that I'll usually target, I'll usually target like Leonidas or Taiko or Tayo, whatever that card's name is. Tokai Tayo, I got that completely wrong. So, but just certain cards that I know will be really good for, you know, whatever situation I'm in. Really good to look for those four offensers to set up if you're going first and, you know, you want to use your four, your four play points to go into your floral fencer turn. So gem staff is just really good. It's, it's a toolbox card. Of course, you're going to run three of it. Lastly, for our three drops, I lied. We do run more spells. We're running heroic entry because it is a heroic and it's really, really good. Uh, what it does is you look at the top four cards of your deck and you can put any Swordcraft follower that costs three play points or less and you can play it for free. Uh, if it is a heroic follower, you can give it one, one and you put the remaining cards to the bottom of your deck in any order. So this is literally like a gold paladin card effect. 
So you play it, grab one of these three cost cards, play it, and if it's a heroic, you give it one one. So obviously, you know, ideally you might want to get a mock knight just to swing face with storm, but you could also get a gem staff, and then gem staff lets you find something else, or you get a valiant, and then valiant lets you search for any heroic card you want. So heroic entry is full on deck thinning. And it's really, really good because you have ways to even recycle it from your cemetery and reuse it. So again, this whole deck is kind of like a mix between like a, pa a Vanguard Paladin deck and a Grand Blue deck. So it's, it's, like every, it's like the best of both worlds, just being able to toolbox and RNG at the same time. But that is it for the three costs. So we're gonna move on to the rest of the deck. Four cost is really simple. I'm running two Amelia, the Silver Paladin. I know it's really controversial to only be running two. I was running three at Spring Fest, but just playing around with the ratios, I dropped it down to two just because while the card is really good for its for a fanfare effect that lets you play any three cost card from your hand, I feel like my hand was starting to get kind of clunky where, you know, I'm like, I do have this in my hand, but I don't have a three cost that I want to play this turn for free or you know, I don't want to use this other effect where you can deal four damage to an enemy follower instead. I didn't want to do either of those. So I've, I was just kind of stuck with this, like, well, this card's just kind of sitting here, but I need to play something. So I dropped it down to two. I'm feeling really, really good about that ratio with just the two of, you know, it's working out for me. But I would say if, you know, you got the space, I would say run the three Amelia. It's really, really good. Then five drops, just two, Tokai, Teo. This thing is just insanely good. It's a five drop that has a fanfare of, you can deal an enemy follower damage equal to X, where X is equal to two times the number of followers on your field, including this card. So if you got two things on the board and you're just like, well, I wanna blow up something for six. You just play it, deal six, and then if you have extra evolve points, you can evolve this. So I like Teo just because it's similar to Amelia where you can blow up stuff, but this, can evolve and do more damage. So I like Teo a lot. This is just a really, really good card and I'm really looking forward to playing this card in the next set for set four because I don't think Teo's going anywhere. It's just such a good card. Six drops, I got my one Leo. Leonidas is just super, super good. All it does is you evolve it, but it's evolve form lets you deal five damage to stuff. And then after the evolve form dies, you get Leonidas's resolve, which We'll get into in a bit as well, which basically just pumps up your followers just with an insane increase of power. And it gives everything rush afterwards. So you only need the one amulet, so you need the one Leo, and Gem Staff lets you search your deck. So it's really easy to find Leo, I find. And you know, if you're going second and you play this turn six and you use an evolve point to evolve it, you kind of start steamrolling your opponent with stuff after you start playing cards. So Leo is too good. I don't think I'd ever want to cut Leo from any of my Swordcraft decks. It's just such a good card. And lastly, I am running the one copy of Narita Brian. Brian is just fun. I, I love this card. The fact that it has Ward and Aura and Bane. So Bane meaning that anything it touches dies no matter what. Ward meaning that your opponent has to swing into it when they're attacking you. And Aura meaning that it can't be targeted by card effects. So it's just a really good defense, it's got six health, it's got six attack, and it also has the ability of you can engage it and just deal five damage to your enemy's leader or any of their followers. So you can literally play this turn eight, rest it without have, so you don't have to worry about attacking with it and just deal five damage somewhere. And then since it's rested, it has ward. So this is just a really good kind of like emergency, like, you know, I need to slow my opponent down card, but it's also just really good if you're like, well, I'm just gonna throw Brian down, rest it, burn five. And if your opponent doesn't have a response to get rid of it, you just rest it again and burn another five. That was it for the main deck. We're just gonna jump right into the Evolve deck right now. So going into the Evolve deck, I'm just gonna start off with the fun stuff. We got our two, Valley and Fencer. So this is after you only have two cards in hand, so you can Evolve it. So on Evolve, you select another Heroic Follower with E on your field and Evolve it. So you just Evolve two things this turn. So to kind of give an example, got your Valiant Fencer, you evolve it, and let's say on the board, you either had Amaro or Mock Knight. Both of these have an E to evolve them. So, and they both do different things. So we'll just kind of jump right into that and segueing into what these evolved cards do. So that's 
easily. So that's pretty much what Valiant does, what Amaro does when it's evolved. So let's say you evolve Amaro with Valiant. Amaro Spear Knight's evolve form. So what Amaro does is on evolve, you can select a heroic card in your cemetery and play it for zero play points. So that means you could either play a Mock Knight for zero and then give it Storm, or you can play Heroic Entry from your drop and just play more cards on your board. Obviously you can still play another like Heroic Fencer if you want to do more deck thinning, but it's just the fact that Amaro just recycles your drop zone to play more cards. So in this scenario, if you had Fencer on the board already with Amaro, you get Valiant Fencer Evolve, Amaro, and then Amaro pulls out Mock Knight, and then now you have three things that can all swing this turn, you know, in a perfect world. In a non-perfect world, obviously, if you just play these two these turn, these two still get Rush, so that's nice. You can still swing, swing. This has Strike, or sorry, Storm, so that way you can go in, swing with that. So this is a very, very aggressive deck, and it's just so much fun. So let's say instead of Amaro, you know, you decide you want to evolve your Mock Knight instead, so let's just go and talk about what Mock Knight Evolve does. So let's say you evolve your Mock Knight instead. Mock Knight's on evolve effect is select an enemy follower, deal it two damage. If you have two heroic cards in your cemetery, you deal four instead. And so, you know, obviously the idea here is you pull out a Mock Knight, you can evolve it, deal four somewhere. This will have rush, so you can swing into something. Or if it has storm, you can just swing face. So either one works. So if you, there's something on your opponent's board that has ward and you don't want to swing into it, you can evolve the Mock Knight instead of the Amaro for whatever reason, if it already has Storm, and do that. So there's different ways where you can play around uh, thanks to Valiant Fencer's really, really cool effect to just evolve something else for free. That's pretty much like the heroic combos here. That's the goal here is to use Fencer to evolve one of these two. Amaro is the best target, obviously, because you can just play another heroic card for free. So that's kind of the goal with all the heroic cards. So you're pretty much going to be running two copies of each one. So there's two Floral Fence, or two Valiant Fencers, two Amaro, and two of the Mock Knight. So these are your go-to evolved cards. So you're going to run two of each just, you know, because you got limited space in your evolved deck. But most uh, heroic decks will pretty much be running two of each one. Then moving on to the non-heroic cards, we are running two of the Floral Fencer Evolved. Floral Fencer is a trial deck card. So when you evolve Floral Fencer, you can summon a Steelclad Knight token and a Knight token. Um, there are these guys right here. I can show you right now. So this is the Steelclad and this is just the Knight. So you just play Floral Fencer, evolve it, and then you get two more guys for free. So that's really cool. And since you evolve, the floor fence will have rush, so you can swing into something. It's a 4-4 body. So if you're going second, turn three, play four fencer for three, evolve it for a plate for an evolve token or evolution point. And you got a 4-4 that can swing into another engaged follower. So floor fencer is just like a really, really good go-to. Your opponent has a really tough time having to respond to this board. Like their goal is just to wipe out these things as soon as you play them. Because then you just have stuff that keeps swinging every turn, uh, which gets really annoying for your opponent. So they're going to want to get rid of it. That is why we have the two Floral Fencer. Then we are running the one Leonidas. Uh, I mentioned Leonidas earlier. This is its Evolve form. So what Leonidas Evolve does is on Evolve, select an enemy follower, deal it five damage, and you deal this five damage as well. So the minute it's played, it becomes a 6-2. Something else on the board gets blown up. And because it's Evolved, it'll have Rush, and you just crash into something else because it has a last word. So last word means when it dies, you get a Leonidas Resolve token, which is this thing here. So Leonidas Resolve token, or it's an amulet that just sits on your board, so it occupies one of your five slots. Whenever a Swordcraft follower is put onto your field, it gets three, three, and rush. So imagine you already did this. You got your amulet, you evolve your Floral Fencer, and then now Floral Fencer is a seven, seven, you summon a 5-5 five, five Steelclad Knight and a 4-4 four, four Knight. All of them have Rush, and they just keep those stats forever. It's not just until the end of the turn. So now that just makes things a lot more difficult for your opponent because they now have to deal with these really big bodied cards. So Leonidas is just too good. It's such a stupid card, honestly, the fact that you're able to summon this amulet that just does something this huge. Um, and it just sits on your board for the rest of the game. So 
Ideally, you get your Leo turn six and you just roll with this for the rest of the game and do all your stupid heroic stuff. So we do only run the one Leonidas because we only run the one Leo in the main deck. And then finally I'm running one copy of Teo Evolved. So we do run two Teo in the main deck, but I'm only running one in the Evolved deck for space. It's super simple, it just has Storm. That's all it is. So the, the point is you play Teo, deal something damage, and then you can evolve it for two into this, and then you can swing face. Uh, again, if you have Leo's Resolve out on the board, this is an 8-8, which is really dumb to just swing into your opponent's face. That's uh, that's pretty much what I'm uh, what I'm rolling with here. So this is what the full Evolved deck basically looks like, all 10 cards. And I'm genuinely having a really good time with this build. I really, really like the Teo. I would mention that if you're not interested in running the Teo, instead of Teo, you could run Albert instead because Albert does have where it's evolved form, has strike where it can swing again. So that's also a really good finisher as well. I just like the Teo for the control to you know blow up stuff on my opponent's board because they're trying to do the same thing to me. Teo's also really good against the Swordcraft mirror match. I am liking this card a lot. That's pretty much it for the deck profile. I am getting used to this new game as most do when they're trying out something new, but I am having a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully showing off some more future Shadowverse content for you guys after we kind of figure out how to record some games and you know show those off. Uh, we actually do have quite a few Shadowverse decks in terms of like our group of friends. So we can probably show like a, a pretty decent amount of games for you guys. So if, if you guys are interested in seeing some Shadowverse content, let us know and we can start putting more of these out. Uh, again, a big shout out to Avalon Accessories for these dice. These things are just insanely, insanely helpful, uh, especially these middle dice that do the plus powers. I know a lot of people, what they do is they get regular dice and they get like a set of reds and a set of blues, and they kind of use those to adjust power, which I understand as well, but these are just so clean. I just love the way that they look. So, and they're just super simple to work with. Thank you guys for watching. Always appreciate you guys checking out my little deck profiles and such, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.